this is the state of the nation are we going for an election it looks like uh, it might not happen due to the unavailability of funds at least that's what the government says now in my op- opinion i too feel that this local government election is not as vital as what the sjb and the jvp are trying to make it to be now, if we can go for a general election now that could at least make an impact for the buck we spent tonight i have a bigger conundrum after 2016 when we went to the imf i think for the 16th time the same situation that is occurring now happened and at that time if your amnesia infused brains have forgotten the current government in power the sri lanka budjana peramuna led by former president mahind rajapaksa began huge runs of protest against the implementation of imf led proposals basically against the high cost of living high taxes high commodity prices and unbearable cost from every corner Remember how they started from Rugegoda and made their way to the golf is green? Remember how they fought for Sri Lanka's agenda? Not allowing foreign powers to interfere, ensuring that you have a voice and fought hard for you. Now, when the same level of economic suppression is occurring, who's fighting for you now? Not the SLPP, they too are now on board with all things they fought against. In fact, they are leading from the front to squeeze you more simply by listening to the organizations they detested back in 2016. So whom do we have now? Podujana Peramuna came to power with the support of the nationalistic force on the assurance that they would correct all historical mistakes. But obviously they betrayed the nationalistic forces and now doing the right opposite of the of what they promised the nation merely for their survival in such a context it is true that nationalistic forces seems to be weak at this juncture yet they are trying to overcome the psychological barrier created by the enemies of our motherland through out of history we have overcome such difficult times i am sure and i hope that nationalistic forces will revive itself and stand by the country with the blessings of the maha sangha Well, that was uh, Venerable Professor Madhaguda Abedi Satero, the chief incumbent of the Sunitra Mahadevi University College, basically explaining who you have right now. The nationalistic camp seems to have taken a hit. So now everyone wants an election, but the government says they don't have the money. So we are at an impasse. What are we going to do? Giving this economic crisis they are going to postpone elections but there is no legal uh, provisions for them to postpone so if we allow any government to postpone uh, elections whatever the elections without any legal framework or legal provisions so it will be a bad practice we know the government we know we have a we have a economic crisis we are very challenging we are facing very challenging period now but at the same time government spent a lot of money for unnecessary things even in the independent day they spent a lot of money and they are appointing the cabinet ministers likewise there are several other expenses they have made there's no big change uh, so our demand is or our rather our request is government to uh, follow the constitution in this country and follow the elections act in this country so if they are not doing that that is their failure so if they can't manage 10 billion so that is half day expenses for the country half day expenses for the country so less than 1% of this government budget for 2023 if they if they can't manage that amount what is the point to uh, run the country rule the country if they can't manage even the president or a secretary of the finance so if they can't manage this small amount or if they can't allocate this small amount uh, for elections i think that's their failure so no 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 point just to discuss about this matter uh, that is they are they are duty bound 
the Secretary of Finance as well as the President. And also, we I wanted to highlight this is this money allocated by the Parliament. So they are the they are the authority. The Parliament do have authority to allocate money for uh, annually for various uh, ministries. So they are the uh, the they are the people who has that power. So they allocate money. Now the secretary has to release that money based on the the budget. Well, that was the executive director of PAFREL, Rohan Hittiarich, explaining as to what we can do. Well, what's funny to me uh, is the, the statement, we must at all times uphold the constitution. That's the go-to line of the Colombo liberals these days. We look at social media, it's, it's flooded with that, that particular line. We have to uphold the constitution. Well, last year, they told us to burn the constitution while raping Lady Liberty in broad daylight. They openly called to violate the constitution and said that they would vouch for criminals once they were taken to court. The law fraternity of this country clapped and celebrated when wrongdoers were released on bail. They didn't care about upholding the constitution at that time. If we actually upheld the constitution, then we wouldn't have this, the, the shame of being the nation that chased an elected leader through thuggery. If these so-called bozos are for real, then they would have used a legal way of chasing a president, a presidential election. Joining me now is the Director General of Community Affairs for the Office of the President, Keith Thendakon. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Uh, 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 Mr. Keith Thendakon was also the former Executive Director of the Campaign for Free and Fair Elections, if you remember, it's CAFE. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Thendakon, for your time. We hear from the government consistently that gathering funds to hold an election is challenging. Now, what is your view about the election? I mean, according to the constitutions, so we have to have the elections. We have, we must have a country must have free and fair elections, and the government always uh, in line with that. There's no contradiction whatsoever with uh, have holding the free and fair elections. But uh, we are having, we are facing a very big challenges these days, economically and uh, financially, to have a very uh, uh, good uh, service to the people when it comes to the health, education, paying salaries, and all that. So whenever we are going to have the free and fair elections, there must be adequate uh, and in-line parallel uh, measures has to be taken place. The priorities has to be identified. And uh, our priorities at the moment, we were the country, we didn't have 30 in our electricity and we didn't, uh, there were four queues and all that. Everyone knows the hardship we have went through without uh, proper medicine and all that. So we are gradually coming out of that uh, scenario we are coming out of that uh, crisis at the moment now we are the farmers are getting better pricing the prices has gone down when it comes to the dal and sugar and the other things imported and uh, we have uh, managed uh, with the qr uh, for the fuel we don't see a huge oh what what there's no uh fuel queues whatsoever now the fisheries industry is coming into play and uh, the, with that the prices has gone down so basically, the, we, are, our, we have the government has chosen their priorities, and in line with that, we are we need another uh, maybe three four months to get uh, all of this because we are in the age of uh, finalizing the IMF uh, loans and all that. So we have in a good track. So within uh, within very period uh, short period of time, we are in the right track to have a have a have a good election. Indeed. Now, Mr. Thendakon, what are your thoughts about this? Uh, instead of a local government election, why not hold a parliamentary election? Because that will give the power back to the people to decide on the fate of, of this nation. What do you think about that? I mean, this was widely spoken and discussed during the last uh, six, seven months. Uh, why not go for a uh, parliamentary elections? Yes, according to the Sri Lankan constitution, Presidential elections, parliamentary elections, and the referendums are the universal franchise sort of quoted uh, scenario. 
and we everyone admits it and th there were some uh, people concerning that the present government the present government plus the present parliament is not a uh, did not showcase uh, the people's wishes and inspirations at the moment so that part is also there and uh, maybe some people are now uh, demanding or uh, uh, asking for a presidential election uh, instead of the local elections. And uh, we were very much overdue with the uh, uh, provincial elections also. So with that thing, yes, it is a possibility. And if everyone agrees on that scenario, maybe within no time, maybe by end of this year, we can have either presidential or a parliamentary legislation. And I think in person, in person, I, I I feel the same. To have a presidential or the parliamentary legislation is the best scenario, so we can have a fresh start. But before that country's priorities has to be addressed. The people should get food, medicine, education, and the very basics. And IMF deal has to be closed. And then only we can have a proper management with the finance and getting the important essential foods and everything to the country is the need of the Arabs. Indeed. Uh, thank you. That was the former executive director of the Campaign for Free and Fair Election, Mr. Th uh, Keithy Thinakon. Uh, let's take a short commercial break. This is the State of the Nation. I'll be back with a closer.